continuation of first law of thermodynamics. So here, sign conventions for work done. When a gas expands, or work done by the gas can be taken as positive. When the gas compresses, or work done on the gas can be taken as negative. When heat absorbed by the system, or heat is given to the system, or heat flows into the system can be taken as positive whereas heat emitted by the system or heat given out by the system or flows out of the system can be taken as negative. So by using these conve uh, conve sign conventions we can apply first law of thermodynamics for different thermodynamic processes. Next we will discuss specific uh, specific heat. So specific heat is represented by S. S is equal to dQ by m into dt the amount of heat required to raise the temperature of unit mass of a gas through 1 degree centigrade is represented with s so here dp is equal to ms dt whereas molar specific heat is represented by capital c which is dq by n into dt now here we can write dp is equal to n C dt. Now at constant volume, we can take dp is equal to n into Cv dt, which is equal to du. Since dw is equal to p into dv, at a constant volume, dv is equal to 0. That is why d is equal to 0 then dp is equal to du plus dw then dw is equal to 0 we can replace dp with the du and then at constant pressure dp is equal to ncp dt and what in dw can be written as n or dt So here, R is called universal gas constant. In terms of this universal ga gas constant, we can express Cv, Cp values by using a relation called a specific heat relation that is called Mayer's formula. Now we will discuss uh, Mayer's formula. Cp is greater than Cv since uh, at a constant volume dw is equal to 0 that is the reason Cp is greater than Cv from this we have Cp minus Cv is equal to R now this is called Mayer's formula but here this equation is valid for one mole of a gas when Cp and Cv are expressed in for example when you take in Cp is equal to dq by n into dt the unit for uh, cp is joule per mole kelvin when we have taken one mole of a gas and cp cv are expressed in joule per mole kelvin this is called a uh, unit of work then we can take cp minus cv is equal to r the same equation cp minus cv is equal to r by j now, for mole of a gas, we can represent Cp, Cv are expressed in the units of calorie per mole Kelvin. So, here we can use uh, Kelvin or degree centigrade. So, on temperature scale, 
change in scale on Kelvin at temperature will give us the same value because T1 plus T2 or difference in temperature when you take it T1 plus 273 and T2 plus 273 minus 273 plus 273 will cancel that is the reason the Kelvin scale and the degree centigrade, degree centigrade scale will reach uh, the same value when they are expressed in uh, change in temperature. Now we can take that uh, Kelvin or degree centigrade. Now, the same way Cp minus Cv we can represent with R by M. This is also we can take it as small r. This is called uh, relation for 1 gram of a gas. Cp minus Cv is equal to R. This equation is valid for 1 mole of a gas. Cp minus Cv is equal to R by M which is equal to small r. This equation is valid for 1 gram of a gas. When I take in 1 gram of a gas, the molecular weight is also plays an important role. That is the reason in expressions they will represent molecular weight. So when they have given molecular weight values, it means that they are expressing 1 gram of a gas. And then Cp minus Cv is equal to R by N A. This we can take it as Kb. Kb is called Boltzmann constant. This is for one molecule. So in this, in every situation, when Cp and Cv are expressed in calorie for mole Kelvin, we can uh, divide with J. Otherwise, when they are expressed in SI units, that is in uh, units of work, we can take with uh, directly R. Cp minus Cv is equal to R for one mole of a gas. Cp minus Cv is equal to R by M, which is equal to small r. This is called gas constant for one gram of a gas. And this is Boltzmann constant or gas constant for one molecule. So these are uh, Meyer's formula and different forms of relations for mole of a gas, gram of a gas and per molecule. Now, the Cp-Cv relation in terms of R and degrees of freedom we will discuss. So by knowing degrees of freedom, we can express the values of Cp and Cv and ratio of Cp and Cv is called gamma. Those values we will discuss. For that, we will go with the degrees of freedom. Represent by F. For calculating degrees of freedom, we will use formula F is equal to 3n minus k. Where n is number of molecules in a given molecule and k is number of restrictions for example for monoatomic gas n is equal to 1 k is equal to 0 then f is equal to 3 degrees of freedom is 3 which means the, these 3 are translational degrees of freedom and for diatomic gas, n is equal to 2, k is equal to 1, then f is equal to 3 into 2, 6 minus 1, 5 degrees of freedom. In this 5 degrees of freedom, we have 3 types of degrees of freedom, 3 translational degrees of freedom, 2 rotational degrees of freedom and two vibrational degrees of freedom. So here vibrational degrees of freedom we can consider only at high temperature until unless they mention we no, no need to take this vibrational degrees of freedom otherwise in the given question they will mention consider vibrational degrees of freedom. So then only we need to take this two into consideration otherwise at normal temperature diatomic gas has five degrees of freedom there is three translational degrees of freedom and two rotational degrees of freedom. So in the given question itself, they will mention diatomic gas. But what is the internal energy due to translational degrees of freedom? If they specify the translational degrees of freedom, we need to go with the three. So we need to consider this three degrees of freedom. And for triatomic gas, so here we have linear molecules like this for them n is equal to 3 k is equal to 2 so f is equal to 3n minus k 9 minus 2 this is 7 so here also there are 3 
translational degrees of freedom two rotational degrees of freedom and two vibrational degrees of freedom so this vibrational degrees of freedom we need to consider at high temperature otherwise we need to take f is equal to 7 in general by using this formula what we are getting degrees of freedom that only we need to consider if they mention vibrational degrees of freedom so then only we need to take this consideration otherwise we can go with uh, these expressions whereas for uh, triatomic non-linear molecules for them we can take n is equal to 3 k is equal to 3 then n degrees of freedom f is equal to 6 so here 3 translational degrees of freedom and 3 rotational degrees of freedom so this is about uh, degrees of freedom so here we need to observe whether they mention high temperature or includes or, act, uh, or uh, neglect vibrational degrees of freedom like that they mentioned we need to go with uh, uh, these degrees of vibrational degrees of freedom otherwise we can take for monatomic degrees of freedom f is equal to 3 diatomic f is equal to 5 triatomic f is equal to 7 triatomic linear non-linear f is equal to 6 Now internal energy Second law of equipartition of energy Internal energy is 1 by 2 kBt This is called internal energy of one molecule along one degree of freedom along 1 degree of freedom if you want to find for all degrees of freedom we need to multiply with f u is equal to f into 1 by 2 kbt this is internal energy of one molecule along all degrees of freedom internal energy along all degrees of freedom of one molecule now you know, in one mole of a gas, there are Avogadro number of atoms. So when we multiply with Na, this will give for one mole of a gas. So see the difference. So here according to law of equipartition of energy, 1 by 2 kBT is internal energy of one molecule along one degree of freedom. If you multiply with the degrees of freedom, it will give one molecule along all degrees of freedom. So if you multiply with Na, this is one molecule, one mole of a gas along all degrees of freedom. Now, we know R is equal to our Boltzmann constant Kb we can write as R by Na. Now Kb into Na is called R. We can replace U is equal to 1 by 2 F into Rt. This is internal energy of a gas or one mole of a gas along all degrees of freedom. So based on this, we can apply for internal energy of gas and respective CP, CV, gamma values. We can know by knowing degrees of freedom and also this expression, we can calculate CP, CV and gamma values. Now we can go with a uh, table which represents all internal energy, degrees of freedom, CV, CV and gamma values. So here we start with the uh, degrees of freedom, F is equal to 3n minus k. Internal energy is F by 2 RT. This is CP. First we go with the uh, CV. CV is nothing but uh, du by dt 
CP is nothing but uh, CV plus R. Then this is gamma. Gamma is equal to CP by CV. Now, for monoatomic gas, degrees of freedom 3, internal energy 3 by 2 RT, CV 3 by 2 R, this is 5 by 2 R, this is 5 by 3, that is gamma. Now here, gamma you can represent with the 1 plus 2 by F, this is the relation between uh, gamma and degrees of freedom. So gamma is equal to 1 plus 2 by F. So by knowing the F value, so 1 plus 2 by 3, we can get 5 by 3. So this expression also we can use for calculating the expression of gamma. This is for monoatomic. For diatomic gas, F is equal to 5. This is 5 by 2 RT. This is 5 by 2 R. This is 7 by 2 R. This is 7 by 5. Whereas triatomic linear f is equal to 7. This is 7 by 2 RT. 7 by 2 R. 9 by 2 R. This is 9 by 7. Whereas triatomic non-linear triatomic non-linear f is equal to 6 this is 6 rt 6 by 2 which gives 3 rt this is 3 r this is 4 r and this is 4 by 3 so this gamma values of pi by 3 monatomic 7 by 5 diatomic 9 by 7 triatomic linear molecules 4 by 3 triatomic non-linear molecules by knowing these values we can able to solve numericals related to thermodynamics and also related to kinetic theory of gases okay once uh, try to note uh, the values then we can go for uh, Specific heat of solid is equal to 3R, whereas specific heat of water is 9R. So these expressions they will directly ask specific heat of solid 3R, specific heat of water is 9R. Then what is the value of R? R is equal to 8.31 joule per mole kelvin in SI system whereas R is equal to 2 calorie 1.98 you can take approximately 2 while calculating the numericals 2 calorie for mole degree centigrade or this we can also take as kelvin so by, the, by taking these values so 3 are approximately 25 joule per mole kelvin so 9 r we can multiply with these values for getting specific heat of solid and specific heat of water thermodynamic processes First one, isothermal process in this temperature is constant 
then internal energy is remains constant then change in internal energy is equal to zero then for application of first law of thermodynamics we can take dp is equal to du plus dw then we can write as du is equal to zero then dp is equal to dw now equation of state for uh, thermal isothermal process is pv is equal to nrt as t is constant we can write p v is equal to constant this is equation of state for isothermal process now indicator diagram we can represent with p and this is v now as volume increases pressure decreases this nature of the graphic uh, graph is rectangular hyperbola whereas isothermal bulk modulus is equal to pressure warden in isothermal process we can take it as 2.303 log base 10 final minus final by initial whereas 2.303 r into t point three zero three RT log VF by VI whereas two point three zero three RT log initial pressure by final pressure to the base term. The base term is in terms of LN we can represent with uh, two point three zero three we need to take uh, to convert uh, log to the base E to the log to the base term. Now for isothermal process what is the parameter is constant application of first law of thermodynamics to the isothermal process what is equation of state what is indicator diagram and what is isothermal bulk modulus and then work done due to or work done uh, during isothermal process that is final minus initial in terms of volume initial by final in terms of uh, pressure Then second one, adiabatic process, Q is equal to constant or dp is equal to zero. So what is the process in which heat can neither absorb nor emitted that is called adiabatic process that is also this year 2019 80 percent. Now here dp is equal to 0 then we can apply dp is equal to du plus dw then dw is equal to minus du this is the application for first law of thermodynamics and equation of state for adiabatic process is pv power gamma is equal to constant as we know pv is equal to nrt we can write in the place of v nrt by p now here P nRT by P whole power of gamma is equal to constant. This is P power of 1, this is P power of gamma, this is T power of gamma. Then we can write P power of 1 minus gamma, T power gamma is equal to constant. This is another form of equation of state for adiabatic process. And also in the place of uh, P we can write nRT by V. Now nRT by V into V power gamma is equal to constant. Then V power of 1, V power of gamma. So now T V power gamma minus 1 is equal to constant. So here this also we can write T and P into T power of gamma by 1 minus gamma is equal to constant. So these are very important relations regarding adiabatic process. Three forms of uh, equation of state for adiabatic process. P V power gamma is equal to constant. P power 1 minus gamma, T power of gamma is equal to constant. And uh, T V power gamma minus 1 is equal to 
constant. So here, sometimes they may give P is proportional to PQ. Then what is the type of the gas? So from this relation, we can calculate the value of gamma by substituting the value of by knowing the value of gamma, we can decide the, the nature of the gas. But in the case of adiabatic process, adiabatic bulk modulus is equal to gamma times the pressure. P power gamma is equal to constant. By applying log on both the sides, we will get a gamma with the coefficient of pressure. Then adiabatic bulk modulus is equal to gamma times the pressure. So here work done during adiabatic process, you can write nr by gamma minus 1 initial temperature minus final temperature whereas 1 by 1 minus gamma final minus initial so pv is equal to nrt in terms of pv we can write we can express like this this is gamma minus 1 this is 1 minus gamma if you want to express initial minus final we can also re represent with gamma minus 1 final minus initial and here indicator diagram for this is also we can act rectangular hyperbola now here we can compare both adiabatic and isothermal process during expansion and compression this is pv graph which is representing both adiabatic and isothermal process. This is 1 and this is 2. And the PV area under PV graph will give what then? When taking this, 1 is isothermal process and 2 is adiabatic process. So this is during expansion. So during expansion, what done during isothermal process is greater than what done during adiabatic process. Whereas during compression, graph will be like this. This is 1 and this is 2. 1 is representing adiabatic process and 2 is representing isothermal process so here during compression what done under isothermal process is less than what done under adiabatic process so area under pv graph will use what then so based on that expansion and uh, compression we can compare the what then and what then so here during uh, isothermal is less than adiabatic so here greater than adiabatic Oh yeah. Then uh, ISO pouring process. So here uh, volume is constant. Then uh, change in volume is equal to zero. And as dw is equal to pdv so which is equal to 0 since change in volume is equal to 0 so here isothermal bulk modulus is nothing but pv by delta v as delta v is equal to 0 then uh, isochoric bulk modulus is equal to infinity so pv diagram for isochoric process as volume is constant you can like this now slope of the graph is equal to change in y coordinates by change in x coordinates as change in x coordinate is equal to 0 then slope is equal to infinity 
Now here, one end is equal to zero during isochoric process. An isobaric process. So during isobaric process, pressure is constant. Then we can write first law of thermodynamics. D is equal to du plus P d v. Now isobaric bulk modulus is equal to P v by delta v as P is constant. In the place of P, we can write h rho z into v by delta v. Now PV diagram or indicator diagram for isoporic pro isobaric process is a straight line parallel to horizontal axis. Now slope is equal to change in y coordinates a is 0 then slope will be equal to 0 for isobaric process. Then what done during isobaric process is P into V2 minus V1. As PV is equal to NRT, we can write PV is equal to NRT. This is N into T2 minus T1. Now CP, CV expression in terms of R and gamma. CV we can write as R by gamma minus 1 whereas CP we can write as gamma R by gamma minus 1 as we know CP minus CV is equal to R that is equation number 1 and CP by CV is equal to gamma that is equation number 2 by simplifying these two equations we will get expression CP, CV is equal to R by gamma minus 1 and Cp is equal to gamma r by gamma minus 1 and gamma is equal to 1 plus 2 by f this is the relation between gamma and degrees of freedom now here at constant pressure du by dq is equal to the amount of heat which is absorbed to increase the internal energy is nothing but du by dq which is equal to du we can write as n cv dt dq we can write n cp dt thus we can write cv by cp this is equal to 1 by gamma the amount of heat to increase the internal energy at a constant pressure is nothing but reciprocal of the gamma whereas dw by dq that is the amount of work at constant pressure ton is nothing but nr dt by ncp ncp dt this we can write cp minus cv by cp this is 1 minus 1 by gamma so these expressions we will ask directly in the examination so dq by d, du by dq is nothing but 1 by gamma whereas dw by dq is equal to 1 minus 1 by gamma as earlier we discussed dq is equal to dq is equal to n cp dt du is equal to n cv dt dw is equal to nr dt these three are uh, very important relations among internal energy work and heat and then cv of mixture of gases is equal to n cv1 plus n cv2 by n1 plus n2 
whereas CP mixture is equal to same formula in terms of P otherwise we can write CV mixture plus R CP minus CV is equal to CP minus CV is equal to R then you can write uh, CV mixture plus R now N1 plus N2 by gamma mixture minus 1 that means N1 moles of a gas N2 moles of a gas is mixed then what is the what is the value of gamma mixture is equal to N1 by gamma 1 minus 1 plus N2 by gamma 2 minus 1 so this is we can calculate the value of gamma mixture by using this equation when N1 number of gas and N2 number of N2 moles of a gas is added or mixed up, we can use this expression to calculate the gamma mixture. And then uh, cyclic process. In case of cyclic process, PV graph is like this. If it is clockwise, warden is positive in clockwise direction, warden is negative in anti-clockwise direction. For cyclic process, internal energy is remains constant, then change in internal energy is equal to zero. So for during cyclic process, we can now take warden in clockwise direction is positive warden in anti-clockwise direction is negative so for cyclic process internal energy remains constant then change internal energy equal to zero then we can take dq is equal to du plus dw so the dq is equal to dw for cyclic process so here one important application is p v they will give cyclic process like this but this graph is looking like circle but we can't decide by seeing the structure we need to know this values v1 v2 this is p1 p2 if difference is between these two and these two is the same then only we can take that as circle we can use pi r square for finding area of the circle otherwise we can take pi into a into b a is called semi major axis and b is called semi minor axis so based on the values of v1 v2 p1 p2 whether this is circular or not we can decide by knowing the values not by seeing the figure so if this is not a circular shape then we can use formula pi into a into b a and b are semi major and semi minor axis And then uh, polyatomic gas. So, in the case of polyatomic gas, we can take uh, PV is proposed, PV proposed onto alpha is equal to constant. Then we have specific heat capacity or heat capacity, we can write uh, CV plus R by 1 minus alpha. Now, here CV we know. R by gamma minus 1 plus R by 1 minus alpha. So this is called heat capacity or thermal capacity of polyatomic gas. So based on this, uh, there is a previous question related to polyatomic gas. You can use this term, what is power is there? This is 3, other than that gamma, 5 by 3, 9 by 7, that's all. They will give 3, 4 like that. By using that uh, value, you can calculate thermal capacity or heat capacity in the case of polyatomic gas. So, heat engine. You know, heat engine is nothing but a device which converts heat into useful mechanical burden. So, here we have engine.
so this is source or hot reservoir at temperature T1 this is sink or cold reservoir at temperature T2 this is called engine now the heat engine which converts heat into useful mechanical bundle so it takes the heat Q1 from source which is at temperature T1 this is high temperature and that heat is converted into useful work done and remaining heat is sent to the sink the heat sent to the sink is represented by Q2 the difference in heat is nothing but work done W is equal to Q1 minus Q2 now Q1 is heat taken by the engine from hot reservoir Q2 is heat sent to the sink or cold reservoir at lower temperature then this is output one done is nothing but q1 minus q2 that means the sum of the heat taken from the source is converted into one done and remaining heat is sent to the sink now here efficiency of heat engine we can write as output by input so here output is one done input is heat taken from the source now eta is equal to w by q1 this we can write uh, q1 minus q2 by q1 now here for reversible heat engine entropy is remains constant q by t is equal to constant then q is replaced with the uh, or q1 by t1 is equal to q2 by t2 we can write uh, t1 by t2 is equal to q1 by q2 then we can write 1 minus t2 by t1 so Q is replaced by T1 by T2. This is possible only in the case of reversible heat engine because entropy remains constant for reversible heat engines. This is efficiency of the heat engine. So T1 is high temperature and T2 is low temperature. While calculating numericals, T1, T2 should be taken in terms of Kelvins. So now here sometimes they will ask what is the heat given to the sink that is uh, value of q2 we have to find so for that they will give the value of eta then eta is equal to w by q1 so from this we need to calculate the value of uh, w or q1 based on the given data and then by using w is equal to q1 minus q2 then we can calculate q1 minus w is nothing but q2 q2 is the heat given to the sink or cold reservoir Next, refrigerator. So it is a reversible heat engine operated in reverse direction. We can take this is refrigerator. This is source at high temperature. This is a sink at low temperature. Now here, refrigerator is an external pump which pumps heat from low temperature region to the high temperature region the reason it will take heat from the cold reservoir and doing external work done so this is work done by the engine or pump or refrigerator this is W so by doing this work done refrigerator is sending the heat Q2 from cold reservoir to the hot reservoir so this is the heat sent to the cold reservoir is q1 so q2 is amount of heat taken from the sink to send to the hot reservoir by doing external work done this work done again we can represent with q1 minus q2 so q2 is taking from the cold reservoir and low temperature w is work done doing by the engine or refrigerator or by the pump to send heat from cold reservoir to the hot reservoir now here we can take performance of heat engine is represented by beta so here what is the output output is nothing but heat which is sending to the hot reservoir that is q2 by 
input is nothing but it is doing what done to send the heat from hot reservoir to the cold reservoir. So whereas eta is equal to W by Q1, heat engine converts heat into what done, output is what done. So here in the case of refrigerator, output is Q2 which is sending from hot cold reservoir to the hot reservoir by doing external work done. So here work done can be treated as input. Now here we can write Q2 by Q1 minus Q2 or we can write T2 by T1 minus T2. Now here beta is equal to 1 by T1 by T2 minus 1. Now we will try to relate the efficiency of heat engine and the performance of the refrigerator. For that, eta is equal to 1 minus T2 by T1. That implies 1 minus eta is equal to T2 by T1. So now beta is equal to, from this, we can write 1 by 1 by 1 minus eta minus 1. This is 1 by 1 minus of 1 minus eta by 1 minus eta. So minus 1 plus 1 cancel, minus into minus plus, then beta is equal to 1 minus eta by eta. This is the relation between performance of heat engine, performance of refrigerator and efficiency of heat engine. So now they will ask the question like this. A heat engine of efficiency eta is equal to something is working as a refrigerator. Then what is the heat sent to the cold reservoir? Then we can take that value as beta is equal to Q2 by W. Then Q2 is equal to beta into W. Now here Q2 is heat is sent to the cold reservoir. So now in the given question they are given the value of eta. So from the value of eta we need to calculate beta value, coefficient of performance and then we need to substitute here for getting the heat sent to the cold reservoir. So this is about uh, refrigerator. So these are the topics related to thermodynamics. The next video will cover uh, kinetic theory of gases. Thank you.